in many ways this channel is a little bit bittersweet as we often feature long forgotten lure designs and lure designers and companies that have gone out of business. Well, this week's episode has a happy ending. We're gonna be focusing on the origins of the Jaltec Bait Company, one of the dominant soft plastic baits throughout the South in the 1980s and 90s. And you'll be excited to know, Jaltec's back. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Long before he would become a fixture in the fishing tackle industry, a 14-year-old Bruce Benedict was fishing a Dallas Bass Club tournament alongside his father Charles when the pair noticed another angler fishing with homemade hand-poured lures. And that was the spark that would send the young bait maker down a path that would eventually dominate the southern bass fishing scene throughout much of the 1980s and 90s. A 40 Texas native who often plied the waters of Lake Fork, Sam Rayburn, and Toledo Bend, Bruce sought out styles, colors, and characteristics that he didn't see from other soft plastics currently on the market, so he decided to make his own. The first two molds that he cut were a crawfish imitation, the Wacky Crawl, and a spinnerbait trailer, the Wacky Worm. And by 1983, Bruce was selling them locally under the banner of Jawtech Worms. Behind every great product is a great salesman. And much of Jawtech's success can be attributed to Ken Addington, who served as Jawtech's traveling salesman from 1983 to 1988. Ken helped stock the shelves with Jawtech at tackle shops throughout Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana, eventually introducing the product to Academy Sports and the Bass Pro Shops headquarters in Springfield, Missouri. Ken and Bruce eventually parted ways, and Ken became a full-time guide during the Ethel era of Lake Fork. But that is probably another episode for another week. Jawtech's reputation spread like a brush fire throughout the southern states, and by the late 1980s, Jawtech baits were cashing checks for big-name pros like Rob Kilby, Charlie Reed, Randy Dearman, and Alton Jones. For the next decade, Jawtech outsourced production to Sabine Manufacturing in Manny, Louisiana, and cranked out some wild baits with even wilder names like the Chatterbox, the Rip and Rattler, the Bogus Wiggler, and the Baby Bowfin. Wanting control over his finished product and also seeking the ability to add salt to his baits, Bruce brought Jawtech production in house in 1994. Fatherhood would eventually pull Bruce from competitive bass angling in 1997, and two years later he would shoot his last Jawtech worm, seeking to better provide for his family. Bruce Benedict's son Colt was only four years old when Jawtech halted production, but the desire to pick up where his father left off stuck with Colt throughout high school and after college. Bruce suffered a stroke in 2020, and while recovering, the topic of resurrecting Jawtech was a frequent conversation between father and son. And according to Colt, one day his father turned to him and said, I need you to figure out how to make jaw tech again. Armed with 30-year-old bait-making equipment and the 17 original jaw tech aluminum molds, Colt worked nights and weekends for the next four months perfecting a system for shooting jaw tech soft plastics. Realizing that part-time was not going to get jaw tech back to its position of dominance, Colt quit his job to pursue jaw tech full-time in 2021. I've gotten to know Colt over the past several months in preparation for this Retro Bassin episode. And I've got to say that Jawtech epitomizes the kind of company that you're rooting for. No surprise, Colt has a ton of Jawtech old school artifacts and he was gracious enough to send a few to me on loaner so that I could share them with you guys. We are gonna go look through some old school Jawtech apparel. I've got some vintage as well as new Jawtech baits and 
this pretty glorious Jawtech catalog from 1994. We're gonna go through this thing page by page and check out the Jawtech baits that you can't get anymore and the ones that Colt has put back into production. Be sure to stick around at the end of the video because we're gonna be doing a very retro Jawtech giveaway. Before we flip through the Jawtech catalog, I do wanna show you guys some of the other artifacts that Colt sent our way for your viewing pleasure. We can see a couple of pretty glorious Jawtech hats here. This one actually looks like a newer hat and I did see some folks on Instagram with the new Jawtech hat on, this looks like a Richardson 112. So you might be able to get those. Uh, that's a honey of a hat for sure. And of course, the old school hat, you can tell because it's got the rope on it and a pretty glorious Wacky Crawl logo. I've also got here, it says Jawtech Pumpkin Seed. Back when Pumpkin Seed was new and all the rage. <laughs> Check out that thing. And here is definitely a hat after my own heart. A foam mesh trucker cap with a pretty sweet printed Jawtech Worms logo. <laughs> I love that. Oh, and you might have spotted this. Colt also sent along a couple of VHS video cassettes. Unfortunately, I am without a tape machine at the moment, so I'm gonna have to make an investment and get one, and we will figure out a way to show you guys some of the footage on here, because I guarantee you, the bogus Wiggler freshwater saltwater chatterbox video, it's got some old school VHS gold in there. Here is the 1994 Jawtech product catalog, and you guys know me, I am a total nerd when it comes to vintage catalogs, so you can only imagine my excitement when I figured out that Colt sent me this to review on the channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at this catalog and see what kind of offerings Jawtech had back in old 1994. First nice spread we see on the left some Jawtech displays for probably just about every lure in the Jawtech line. I guess if you're a Jawtech dealer at the time, they would provide you with one of these displays and oh, I wish I could get my hands on one of those for the old retro bass in a studio. On the right looks like a pretty good assortment of terminal tackle, really focusing on a lot of brass stuff. I know that everything is tungsten these days, but there was a time when brass was the most technologically advanced sinker material out there because of its hardness and loudness. It was really nice for Texas rigs, but especially for clacking Carolina rigs. Jawtech definitely had a pretty impressive collection of terminal tackle. And here is a pack of old brass weights that Colt sent me to look at. That is what looks like a ounce, ounce and a half of there. <laughs> that thing's a monster. All right, let's take a look at the offerings on this page. It says the Rattling Big Bite Jig. Uh, the Big Bite Jig was a smash hit in 1993. Uh, so was Meatloaf's I Would Do Anything for Love, but I won't do that. Uh, Capture the imagination of trophy bass fishermen throughout the country. Uh, with innovativeness, it was highlighted in BASS Times Magazine. Its uniqueness also attracted the attention of many top pros and made it a staple on the national bass circuit. And the Terminator Lizard. This says, this lizard is the most versatile lizard on the market, says a former Bassmaster Classic champion, Charlie Reed. It's an outstanding lizard when it comes to sluggish fish. Part of the reason is that it floats higher than any other lizard you can buy. This is a really cool lizard. I love the rib design of this. I remember seeing a few of these in person over at Bacon's Tackle. Ooh, here's a good looking spread. Over on the left, we've got a really nice selection of Chatterbox and Chatterbox Associated Terminal Tackle. Uh, looks like we've got Bruce Benedict there. Showing off a really nice uh, lunker. Probably caught on the old chatterbox. It says, the secret behind the chatterbox. Now a standard tool on the tournament scene lies in its erratic, lifelike response 
to twitching of the rod tip. It never moves the same way twice. Looks like there's a couple of different rattles here. An aluminum rattle as well as a standard plastic BB rattle. Here's a pack of Joltec Chatterbox baits that I recently picked up from, I think it was a yard sale. This thing definitely has a sluggo flavor to it, but I love the fact that you can actually place rattles in this. I don't know if this pack comes with rattles or not. Now it looks like it doesn't, but I know that each one of these baits does have two chambers where you can place a rattle. There's an image on the back of the package right there. You can put your little worm rattle. <laughs> and my favorite part about this, good fish and brews. And on the opposite page, the Rippin' Rattler. I reckon this is a floating worm just sort of by its shape and color. Let's see what the description says. Picture of Alton Jones there. Uh, just when you think there isn't much more we can do to improve the plastic worm, Jawtech provides a delightful surprise with its innovative Rippin' Rattler. This 7-inch oval-shaped worm quickly developed a legend of followers in 1993 who believed it may be the most versatile piece of plastic of all. Ooh. Oh, here's a bait I know well. The old Wacky Crawl. What a good looking bait. And what does this say about the wacky crawl? And by the way, just some amazingly old school colors. No plastic version of a crawfish offers a more lifelike appearance and movement as a wacky crawl. New for 94, the wacky crawl is now formulated with real dehydrated crawfish. Wacky crawls now taste as real as they look. Here's a nice new old stock pack of wacky crawls in a pretty sweet green fleck color. Here's an old school wacky crawl and this is just a good looking bait. I can see you fishing it in a number of different ways. Sure as a trailer but even as a worm you could totally crawl this thing along the bottom. These appendages are wide enough that they'll definitely do some flapping in the water and I just love the two antenna. And here's another wacky crawl in sort of a pumpkin color. Oh, and check it out. The big version of the wacky crawl. And opposite the wacky crawl, we've got the Terminator worm. And looks like a 5 and a 7 inch size. Jawtex Terminator worm is one of the best all-around worms on the market for casting to cover. This can be attributed to the features including a rib body, that traps and releases bubbles and a long ribbon-like tail that swims with the slightest rod movement. All species of bass find the lifelike action irresistible. Here's a vintage pack of the Jawtech Terminator worm that looks like a five incher in chartreuse pumpkin. Definitely has a sort of a ringworm feel to it with those ribs, nice curly tail. <laughs> And the old school Jawtech logo. Hoo hoo. We've got four pretty glorious old school lures on here. First, the Bogus Wiggler. The Bogus Wiggler gained legends of followers who know that the short, fat body and large curl tail are ideal for flipping and pitching situations. Definitely one of the best name baits in the Jawtech lineup, the Bogus Wiggler. A worm that's got an interesting, really fat, curly tail, which I'm sure has a pretty sick thumping action in the water. And here you can see a couple of different ways that you can rig up your Bogus Wiggler. Looks like a Carolina rig and, of course, a Texas rig. Here's a Bogus Wiggler out of the package. And you can really appreciate that tail. Oof, look at that. If that is not a muddy water worm, I don't know what is. And by the way, I love the laminate color on this thing. Oof. Below that, we've got the Ribbed Wiggler. The Ribbed Wiggler proved its worth in the 1993 BASS National Federation Tournament by providing Mike Holt 
with his winning catch. And on the opposite page, uh, the old wacky worm. Oh, I know this thing started out as a spinnerbait trailer, but uh, that totally looks like it could have a number of other applications outside of just pulling behind an old straight king. There's a picture of Alton Jones. The wacky worm is the most potent deep water lure available, says BASS Pro Alton Jones. And this is something Colt was telling me about. The wacky worm is actually a really good deep water bait fished on a little jig head for suspending bass. Anglers would pull up on them, mark them on the depth finder, and just drop the wacky worm, shake it in front of them, and boom. Here is a wacky worm out of the package. Yeah, I know this thing was originally designed to be a spinnerbait trailer, but it looks like it could do so much more. According to Colt, this is really one of the first finesse baits that Jaw Tech came out with, and probably that anybody came out with, to be honest with you. It is a really finessey looking bait, and honestly, I would fish this thing just as it is, either on a light hook or shaky head, Ned Rig kind of style. Oof, look at that. Here's one in a blue color, just to give you a different perspective on the same bait. Uh, I don't know. I've got a feeling I'm going to be throwing the thing sooner than later. And below that looks like a saltwater offering, the shrimp worm. Saltwater anglers from Florida to Texas know the allure of the shrimp worm when impaled on a jig head or positioned on a leader behind a popping cork. Yeah, there's no doubt that thing could catch a trout or redfish. I don't know why, but there's something I absolutely love about the shrimp worm. It is just such a unique bait. I know probably designed for salt water, but I can totally think of a few applications on the old lake where I could use this thing. Here's the Joltek floater. It looks just a little bit like a flip tail lizard. It's the best lure I've seen for getting a strike from bass that aren't interested in eating and won't react to anything, says Texas pro Randy Dearman, a bass winner and Bassmaster Classic qualifier. For that reason, it deserves a spot in everybody's tackle box. And below that, the old four and a half inch baby bowfin. What a wild looking bait that is. The four and a half inch baby bowfin is surprisingly versatile capable of finessing deep water bass on light line or penetrating the thickest cover with the help of a stout flipping stick. It is excellent for enticing skittish cold water bass into striking. That's a mean looking little worm, isn't it? Almost sort of grub-like. And we've got the salty dog lizard. Looks like more standard lizard. Uh, the salty dog is a big bass lure, plain and simple, says bass winner Randy Dearman. Need proof? It was a salty dog that proved to be the undoing of a 17-pound, 10-ounce lake fork bass caught by Stan Moss. Whew. And below that, we've got the French fry. No description necessary. Back page, we've got a spread of some more generic soft plastics. Colt was telling me about this, and apparently Joltec would also sell some more generic baits as well. Not jaw tech proprietary designs by any means. You see some real familiar shapes here. Uh, the old sassy shad. I, I see a sensation, sort of a phenon worm, some stuff like that. But, but also offered by jaw tech in 1994. And there is the back of the book. First, we'll see the thumper worm. It says the thumper worm is the most versatile of all. It says nine-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier Ron Kilby. It is excellent Texas rigged or flipping into heavy cover like brush and grass. And you can rig it on a lightweight and cast it and retrieve it like a spinnerbait or even buzz it on top. You know, fishing that thumper like a spinnerbait, that might be pretty cool. This is a pretty cool picture. It looks like the Benedict family. Uh, with Carly, Brittany, and Bruce Benedict. I'm assuming Colt was uh, not born yet. There they are posing, it looks like, in a uh, portrait studio with some 
pretty nice largemouth bass. I'll have to ask Colt how they got those bass there. <laughs> and last but not least, I'll read this little letter uh, from Bruce Benedict. It says, Dear Fishing Friend, thank you for taking time to look over the product line. After reading the catalog, I hope you'll agree that Jawtech Inc. is well on its way to developing the most complete line of high-quality fish-producing lures and accessories for the fishermen. Just as important as creating a lure that catches fish, Jawtech is building the industry's most comprehensive support system, ranging from distribution and delivery to merchandising and publicity. It begins with our commitment to listening to fishermen who know what it takes to catch fish consistently. Our field staff of more than 50 anglers provide us with that important foundation that we are able to build products that are effective in all corners of the country. Join us in our merchandising effort and you will quickly discover that Jawtech is a can-do company. Whether it's creating enormous product awareness or national publicity or shipping your order in days, not weeks. It will be a relationship built on profits, not promises. Good fishing, Bruce Benedict, President and CEO. So now for the giveaway. Uh, Colt was courteous enough to send a couple of new packs of Jawtech worms, including these. The Sultan. Ooh, I think that's a new one. A 10-inch bass catching machine, no doubt. Oh, also this one, the Stud Bug. Look at that bait. Here we've got the KO Shad. And the brand new and improved Wacky Crawl. In addition to these new school Jawtech baits, as you know, I gotta make this giveaway retro. So here's what else is included. I have put together a little retro bass and pack of some vintage Wacky Crawls. <laughs> You're gonna get six different colors, eight each for a total of, what is that, 48 wacky crawls? <laughs> for your old school fishing adventures. Here's how you register to enter this competition. Just drop a comment down below in this video and in the next week or so, I will use a random comment selector to pick a winner and send them this little Jawtech Retro Bass and Care Pack. There's a couple of different resources to check out if you're interested in learning more about Jawtech baits. The first thing to check out is the Jawtech Instagram page, which I do follow, and I feel like Colt is posting a picture of a big old Texas Jawtech caught bass just about every day. In addition to that, you can also go to the Jawtech website, and on that website, there is an updated list of all the tackle shops that carry Jawtech baits. Much like Bruce and Ken did in the 1980s, Colt is heavily invested in local tackle shops. So be sure to head over to the website to see all the places where you can purchase Jawtech baits. I'm looking forward to getting on the water with some of these old school and new school Jawtech baits. If you're looking for some more old school fishing content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you next Saturday. But until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.